We're getting uh, some information about the Germans in Louisville from the Encyclopedia of Louisville um, by Kleber. It's Kleber's Encyclopedia. And it's got like two pages about Germans. And right before then, he's got some, a little short thing about German American Club, uh, which is just uh, saving the German American heritage. You also got the German Insurance Bank Building. And this Beau Arts style landmark at 207 West Market Street was designed by one of Louisville's most accomplished German born architects and marked the city's second major wave of German immigration. The highly carved two story Indiana limestone building was begun in 1887 to the designs of architect Charles D. Meyer. Additions were made in 1900 and 1919. A lovely Rookwood pottery drinking fountain designed by Louisville sculptress Enid Yandel was added to the lobby. The building's clock tower became a famous, famous landmark. The bank itself was established in 1854 and Louisville saw its first major wave of native Germans who tended to be Protestant, entrepreneurial, and Republican. The city's late 19th century German immigrants who prompted the new bank building tended to be Roman Catholic, blue collar, and Democrat. So the first wave of Germans were uh, Protestant, entrepreneurial, and Republican. But the second wave of Germans uh, were Roman Catholic, blue collar, and Democrat. So there's two waves of Germans there. Okay. Um, so the building continued to serve as a bank, although the name was changed during World War I to Liberty Insurance Bank. Later, Liberty National Bank and Trust Company threatened with demolition on more than one occasion. It was saved and served for a time as the home of Metro United Way and later for the firm of Godsey Associates to Architects. So, architects are in there now. So, Germans, page 338. German families such as the Bruners, the Blinken Bakers, and the Funks immigrated to colonial America and settled in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. Many of their descendants moved to Kentucky after the Revolutionary War and settled in eastern Jefferson County. In 1797, they founded Bruners Town, later renamed Jefferson Town. The German Reformed Church established there in 1809 was the first German church in Jefferson County. Many settlers of German ancestry were also found in Louisville in the late 18th century. Among these was a man named Kay who built the first brick house in the city in 1789. The first German immigrant to settle in Louisville is believed to have been A.D. Eric. So the first German immigrant, uh, a master shoemaker who arrived in 1817, his name was A.D. Eric. E-H-R-I-C-H. -H. In the... Uh, Oh, yeah. So the first brick house in the city, 1789, was by a German. The first German church was 1809. In the early 19th century, growth in Louisville was stimulated by the introduction of steam navigation on the Ohio River. Many German immigrants traveled to river cities such as Louisville, St. Louis, Cincinnati via steamboats from New Orleans. By the 1830s, significant numbers of German-speaking immigrants were living in Louisville, and they began to establish churches in which German was spoken rather than English. St. Boniface, the first German Catholic church, was founded by Father Joseph Stahlschmidt in 1836 and 1849. The administration of St. Boniface was assumed by Franciscan priests from the province of St. Leopold in Tyrol, Austria, the Church of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, St. Mary's was established in 1845, followed by the St. Martin of Tours in 1853, and St. Peter's in 1855. Also, St. John Cemetery, 1849, and St. Michael Cemetery, 1851, were established for German Catholics. Land for Stephen Cemetery is purchased by the St. Boniface Benevolent Society, but the cemetery was not sanctioned by the Diocese of Louisville. The first German Evangelical Church in Louisville was St. Paul's Evangelical Church, founded in 1836 under the leadership of Reverend George Brandau. And I believe, wasn't that the first one? St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. Yeah. So St. Paul's German Evangelical Church. This is the first German evangelical church in Louisville. It was founded in 1836 under the leadership of Reverend George Brandau. 
1836. Um, it's on East Park Broadway in Phoenix Hill. And also there was the, uh, the St. Martin of Tours Church. Um, that was founded in 1853. It was in this book also. I mean, it's just a picture of it, but it... So St. Martin of Tours uh, was constructed in 1853. So there was like several of them in the 40s and 50s that were built. And St. Martin of Tours, 1853, was constructed. So lots of churches are built in the 1840s and 50s. St. Joseph's Orphan Society was founded in 1849 in the wake of a cholera epidemic. Father Carl Bose Wald of St. Mary's Church and Father Otto Jar of St. Boniface Church collaborated in the establishment of the society, which later had branches at six German Catholic parishes. The German Protestant Orphans Homes was founded in 1851. In the early 1850s, the German population of Louisville had grown to 18,000, about 35% of the total population. There were also many German-speaking Swiss and some Austrian immigrants who associated closely with the Germans. Um, I'm part Austria and uh, Austrian and uh, Bavarian and Prussia, so they're they're all German-speaking peoples. Germans influenced Louisville schools in two ways: the introduction of kindergarten and bilingual education. So, kindergarten is in Louisville because of Germans. Bilingual education um, that was actually to speak German, so they introduced it, but they did not. They weren't able to maintain it. The first of the German schools, the Friar Burger Schul was founded in 1852, the Hailman School, attended by Justice Louis Brandeis, uh, who was a famous uh, Supreme Court Justice for privacy. He was in defense of privacy from out of Louisville. The, you got the Brandeis Law Center, uh, Louis Brandeis. It was begun in 1855. That's when the Hailman School started. The school at the German Protestant Orphans Home was regarded as one of the best of its kind at the suggestion of Bishop Martin Spalding. Again, Bishop Martin Spalding, who said that there was a hundred people who were killed in the Know Nothing riots. Uh, Catholic churches organized parish schools. St. Boniface School and St. Martin School were the largest of these. German language instruction was introduced in Louisville Public Schools in 1854. German was taught at both male and female high schools by 1872. The Leader Crayon Singing Society was founded in 1848. The society suggested the formation of a North American single singing federation. Uh, Germans were prominent in the Louisville Philharmonic Society which was formed in 1866. It uh, was conducted by Bavarian native Louis Hast. Germans were enthusiastic opera supporters and performers. In all there are approximately 30 German news uh, German language newspapers in Louisville. There are 30 newspapers in Louisville. That was in German. 30 newspapers. We only got one newspaper now. And in the late 1800s, there's 30, 30 German newspapers. The first of these, the Volksbühne, B-U-E-H-N-E, uh, appeared in 1841, but was short-lived. The Beobacher, um, Ohio, which had the support of liberal Germans, lasted from 1844 to 1856. By far, the most successful German-language newspaper was the Louisville Anzinger. First published on February 28, 1849. The Anzinger became a daily publication several months after its founding. The unsuccessful revolution of 1848 in Germany resulted in the immigration of many educated Germans in the United States, where they became known as 48ers. The 48ers, who advocated liberal political views, were extremely outspoken. Most German immigrants, especially those with strong religious beliefs, did not agree with the 48ers, whose action colored the opinions of American-born citizens about Germans. The 48ers, unable to align themselves with any of the established national political parties, formed the Bund Friar Manor in 1853. The party held a state convention in 1853 and adopted the liberal Louisville platform, which included the abolishment of slavery and voting by women. So, the Louisville platform was per, uh, brought forth by Germans who were in favor of women's right to vote and the abolition of slavery. Many of the tenets of the Louisville platform conflicted with the philosophy of the anti-foreigner, anti-Catholic American party, the Know Nothing Party, which found broad support in Louisville. George Prentice, again, the editor of the Louisville Daily Journal, which later became the Courier Journal, 
supported the American Party in a series of inflammatory editorials preceding the gubernatorial and congressional elections of August 1855. On election day, Monday, August 6, 1855, American Party committees supported by the police took control of the polls and attempted to allow only card-carrying American Party members to vote. So the uh, white nativist, the uh, Protestant, white, Anglo-Saxon, uh, uh, white Americans who were um, anti-German Catholics, they militarily, they used the police to take over the polls. They took over the polls and they weren't allowing anybody else except for uh, members of the American Party to, to vote in the elections. So they weren't allowing the Germans or the Irish people to vote. They were kicking the Irish and the Germans out of the voter rolls so that way their uh, bigoted, racist uh, candidate would win. And he, he did eventually. Uh, he did that day, so uh, fights broke out and violence escalated as nativist mobs ransacked and burned German businesses and homes in the Shelby Street area and the Irish neighborhood west of downtown. German immigrants were among the strongest supporters of the Union during the Civil War. They voted overwhelmingly for pro-Union candidates in state elections in 1861, helping ensure that Kentucky stayed in the Union. Out of a total German population of only 13,000, more than 1,000 men joined the Union Army. In addition, many Germans were members of Louisville's Home Guard units. One to four German companies were in each of the 5th, 6th, 22nd, 28th, and 34th Kentucky Volunteer Infantry Regiments. Three German companies fought in the 4th Kentucky Volunteer Cavalry Regiment. Also, German-born residents of Louisville contributed money to the Union calls, volunteered for work in hospitals, prepared meals and made clothing for soldiers. The Louisville Turn Hall was converted into a hospital for sick and wounded soldiers. German contributions to the Union cause did much to change the attitudes of native-born Louisvillians towards them. Even Daily Louisville Daily Journal editor George Prentice wrote articles praising the German immigrants. So after George Prentice started the 1855 riots after the Civil War, they were so proud about how they fought for the Union. He praised them. In 1865, Louisvillians elected the first German-born mayor, Philip Tompert. German immigration to the United States waned during the Civil War, but resumed in earnest afterwards and reached a peak in 1882. Germans were active participants in the economic and professional expansion of Louisville in the post-Civil War period. By the end of the century, manufacturers such as Ahrens and Ott Manufacturing Company, plumbing fixtures, Henry Vogt Machine Company, Steam Boiler, C.C. Mingle Jr. and Brother Company, Wood Products, Peasley Galbert Company, Paint and Glass Products, and Ewald Iron Company, Ironworks, were a large presence in Louisville. German businessmen were included on the boards of directors of many local banks. Financial institutions established by Germans include the German Security Bank, the German Insurance Bank, and the German Insurance Company. Germans were importing, important in the distilling and brewing businesses. Prominent among the distillers were the Burheim Brothers and the J.B. Waden and Brother Company. German brewmasters practiced their skills in many breweries, both small and large, such as the Frank Fire Fair Brewing Company, Sean and Ackerman Brewing Company, and the Ortel Brewing Company. German beer gardens abounded, the most popular of which was Woodland Garden, founded in 1848. Zinder's Garden was a popular country garden located at the point of Baxter Avenue and Bardstown Road. Germans were well represented in the food industry such as wholesale and retail groceries that sold meat, produce, and dairy products. Butchertown was an area of Louisville where many Germans established meat packing businesses. The Fisher Packing Company was founded in 1855 by Henry Fisher, a German immigrant. So the Fisher Packing Company was founded in 1899 by Henry Fisher, a German immigrant. Many German-speaking Swiss were prominent in dairy farming. German bakeries and confectionaries were found throughout Louisville. So bakeries and candy stores. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, large numbers of Germans were engaged in construction trades. Embalmers and undertakers were prominent in Louisville's German community. Best known among these were Henry Voss and John Ratterman. Also, Henry Nance, who established a floral business in 1850, won an award for his arrangements at the Southern Exposition held in Louisville in 1883 to 87. In 1900, Louisville's population totaled 204. 
5,000, which included 13,000 Germans, about 35,000 persons who claimed at least one German-born parent. Um, so that's that's enough for now. Almost finished. Almost finished with the Louisville Germans, uh, German Catholics in Louisville.